Welcome to Rock Intercessors Ministries. Connecting with you and your family today in prayers to rescue and revive. We're an apostolic, prophetic, deliverance and healing ministry. God has called us to pray and destroy the work of the devil in your life and in your family. To bring healing to your spirit, soul and body. Come and join our service each Sunday at Walthamstow Primary Academy, London, E17, 5DP, from 11am to 1pm. Be blessed as you join us in prayer, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for today. It's a great day. It's a wonderful day. It's a faithful day. You've made it, given it to us that we should rejoice and be glad in this. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because the Bible says we shall decree a thing and it must surely come to pass. We decree, O God, that today is a great special anointing day. And Father, I pray the Lord Jesus, the Father, as you will anoint us today, the anointing of God will break every yoke and will remove every hand of the darkness in our life. So Father, the Bible says, the Son of Man said to free, be free in there. The Father, we're going to have that faith that will sustain our freedom. The freedom that we're going to receive today, the healing we're going to receive today, the breakthrough we're going to receive today. Father, you're going to give us the faith to sustain it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Wow. It's a good day. Yes. It's a good day. I can see it. It's a bright day. It's a good day. At least it's not ready. Amen. Amen. So everyone of praise welcome today in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a great day. Today we're going to continue and to summarize uh, the anointing Sunday. And we're going to finish it up with anointing every one of us today. In the name of the Lord, and this anointing is going to go deep, deep, deep down. So I want you to listen to the Word of God, because the Word of God is what generates faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Word of God is what makes the anointing to work. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Today, I want us to first of all see the importance of anointing. We're going to divide our message today into two. I'm going to be quick. I'll divide the message today into two. One, I'm going to preach on the importance of anointing. Two, I'm going to speak on the anointing of faith. The importance of anointing so that we know how important anointing is to us and what anointing will help us to achieve and what anointing will help us to overcome. Our God is a very good God. Amen. So if we go to Psalm chapter 16 from verse 8, and the word of God says in Psalm 16 verse 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. It says, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. That's number one. Number two, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. <coughs> Say, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And verse 10, therefore my heart for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. You will not leave my soul in hell, and I will not see corruption. Amen? Verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. Pleasures evermore. 
Praise God. So the importance of anointing is loaded. Most of it loaded in Psalm chapter 16. And it says, number one thing is when you receive the anointing, you're going to be strong. And you will not be shaking. Amen. Amen. You will not be moved. No matter what. Because you've got anointing in you. Number two. When you receive the anointing, your heart will be glad. You receive gladness. You say, the Lord loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, the Lord our God have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. So anointing brings gladness to us. Anointing also brings the glory of God, the glory of rejoicing. And when we mean the glory, we mean the presence of God. The glory of God. Anointing brings down the presence of God. And also, our flesh will rest in hope. In hope of what? In hope of the resurrection. Amen. This is the work of anointing. It's very, very important that we understand that anointing brings hope, the hope of the resurrection. Anointing brings rest to us. The Bible says, rest in the Lord. The only thing that will make you to rest in the Lord is the power of anointing. It's when you receive the anointing. You can see many people today, many Christians today, they are not resting there. They are running everywhere. They don't have peace in their life. Even if they have been a very good Christians. But the word of God said to us today that anointing will give us rest and hope will make us strong that we will be not moved. Anointing will abound in us and give us life here on earth and eternal life. Amen? Here on earth, we have a good life. And also, when we sleep, we have eternal life. And this is what the power of anointing does. And the Bible says that anointing will not let your bones, your body to see corruption. You will not see corruption. Amen. And that's why Jesus never used the word die. Jesus used the word sleep. You see, when um, Zacchaeus was, um, uh, Nicodemus, no, Zacchaeus was dead, and then he says, my friend is sleeping. Amen? He sleep, not dead. Because when you receive the anointing, you will not die. You will be alive. We're going to come to that. You will know why. That when you receive anointing, you are alive. Every time, wherever you are, even when you sleep with the Lord, you are alive. To start with, you will not die because you have got eternal life bestowed for you. Amen. Okay. So we can understand that there is a very, very good benefit of anointing. It makes us strong. It makes us glad. It makes us rejoicing. It gives us hope. He gives rest to our flesh. He will never let us to see corruption. Anointing is there to lift us up all the time. And anointing is there to give us life and life in abundance here on earth and also in the kingdom of God. Internal life. Amen. So now, we understand that that is anointing of faith. I'm going to speak on this anointing of faith today. Because we need to understand the anointing of faith. It is very, very important. 
We all know that what about said that without faith, it is impossible for us to do what to please God. If you don't have faith, you cannot please God. And the word of God tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That when you hear the word of God, it gives you faith. And the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, is telling us for the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. That the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. So when you receive the word of God, the word of God is very sharp and sharper than two-edged sword. And when the word of God comes into you, it goes in. The word of God says it penetrates through the flesh to the bone. It does not stop in the bone, it goes to the marrow. And relax there. Amen. When you hear the word of God as you are hearing it now, you receive the faith. And when the faith comes into you through the word of God, the faith penetrates right deep down. The faith doesn't stay on our flesh. But faith goes right deep down. And stays in our bowl. And stays in our, in, in, in our marrows. So that even if our flesh goes back to dust, the faith, our faith will still be there. We're going to still be very, very active. Even if when we have passed away. Amen. So faith penetrates right deep down into our bones. And it is the faith that strengthens our bones and makes us to be strong. And then we remember what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 16 to 18, about when the trumpet will sound. It says, when the trumpet will sound, that those that are in Christ will rise up first. Remember, he's talking about those that have slept with the Lord. And that way he says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. It says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's great. Why would the dead in Christ rise first? Because the faith is still in the bone. They are not dead. So when they hear the trumpet, what's going to happen? Bone to bone, flesh to flesh, and they will rise up first. And what God tells us in Revelation, that even the, the sea will give up everyone that has swallowed. Amen. The anointing is penetrating inside the bone. And then we know one man of God that is called Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 13, 20 to, 20, 20 to 21. Elisha, the man of God. And the Bible says that Elisha died and he was buried. And when he was buried, there comes a problem, a war in Israel. And the people are burying the dead. And as they are carrying the dead man to go and bury him, they come across the grave of Elisha. 
And as they are walking past the grave of Elisha, behold, the enemy come to attack them. And what happened? They take the dead man's body, throw it into the, into the grave of Elisha. And what happened to the dead man? He woke up. Amen. Amen. This is Elisha that is dead for a long time. But his bone is still active because the faith is right deep down in the bone. The flesh is gone. The beauty is gone. But the bone of Elisha is still working because of faith that has penetrated right deep down into the bone and into the marrow and stay. So Elisha performed miracle. And what happened again? The Bible tells us <coughs> when Jesus Christ died in Matthew chapter 27 from verse 52, the word of God says, when Jesus Christ was crucified, when he was crucified, and at the sixth hour, Jesus Christ called out and said, Eli, Eli, lama samatani, Eli, Eli, lama samatani, which means, my Lord, my Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? And on the ninth hour, something happened. Jesus cried out again. Jesus cried out again and gave up the ghost and sleep. And the Bible said the curtain of covering was torn into two. And what happened? The dead, the saints that are dead, they all rise up from the grave. Imagine if you go to the graveyard. <laughs> Praise God. And you see the saints coming up praising God. Hallelujah. You can imagine what's going to happen. This is exactly what happened. Because the, the faith is in the bone. So those saints that have died hundreds of years ago, the word of God said they all jump out, come out of the grave. They come out of the grave and went out and ministered. Because faith never dies. Faith is always there. And the anointing carried that faith right deep down into the bone. And what about the valley? The valley of the dry bone. Amen? The valley of the dry bone in Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 10. And the Lord said to Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones, can they make any move? Can they be alive? And the word of God said, Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest, this one is more than me. Because what I can see is bones, pieces of bones everywhere. But the Lord says, okay, prophesy. These bones can live. They have something in them. They have God faith in them. They can live. They can walk. They can become human beings again. And Elijah, uh, Elijah uh, uh, Ezekiel said, I prophesy as I was told to. And the Bible said the bones, they start to find themselves, locate themselves, and they come together. And at the end of the day, what happened? All those bones of the soldiers of the Israelites that was killed in a battle for a long time, they come together. And they begin to walk again. Flesh coming to them and they become alive again. The anointing is in the bone. Amen. When you receive anointing today, I want you to believe it. I want you to know it. That you will not die again. You gotta believe this. Because you are going to rise up. Even if you sleep with the Lord, you will rise up when the trumpet will be sounded. The sound of trumpet. The Bible said the dead in Christ, they will jump up first. Just as the trumpet at the cross. 
When Jesus said, it is finished, the trumpet was sound, and the saints that have died in Christ, they jump out of grave, physically out of grave. Because of the power of the anointing that have penetrated into the grave. And that's why David says in Psalm 35, verse 10, he says, Lord, who is like unto you that delivereth my bone? The bone, very important in anointing. Amen? <coughs> David said, God, who is like unto you that delivereth my bone from him that is too strong for me? He says, God, who is like unto you, for you delivered my bone from him that is too strong. So I want you to understand that the power of anointing is not washed off when you take shower. <coughs> it penetrates, it goes deep down. Right through your skin, it cuts in through your bone, it go and settle in your bone and also in your marrow. So you carry it. So you become the carrier of anointing. And the when you carry the anointing of God, you will not be moved. You will not be shaken. You will not fear. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The Lord is there. My shepherd, I shall not be moved. Because you are a carrier of anointing. But you know what they will do? You just gonna tell you, you just receive anointing again today? It's washed off? No. This anointing stays in you. This anointing empowers you. This anointing gives you the authority to go out there and preach the good news with boldness. Look at Stephen. When he was about to be stoned, because he got the anointing, he was anointed, he got anointed in his bones. Stephen was anointed. And then he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He said, I saw the Lord stood up. Wow. Someone that is being stoned to death because of Jesus. Because of the name of Jesus. And then he stood and said, I saw Jesus stand up at the right hand of God. And they said, wow, this is abominable. Thing. What are we waiting again? They stoned him to death. But he did not care. Because he know, once he give up the bread, he is taking it up again in God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So that is why we will not be moved. No matter whatever it may be, we're going to have the boldness. Look at Apostle Peter, who is very, very scared, even of the Pharisees. He was preaching after the anointing was given to me. He was looking at the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He says, you that killed Jesus Christ. He has God raised from the dead. At that time, he was speaking abominable thing. Dead sentence. But he did not kill. But he was not moved. Because he had got the power of anointing in his bone. Even though when he was put in prison, he was released. Even Paul and Silas was put in prison as well. Because of the power of anointing, they were released. By the power of the Holy Spirit. So anointing is very, very important. And anointing gives us the wings to fly. Anointing gives us the authority and the power. Anointing empowers us to work for God. Anointing empowers us to go and preach the good news without fearing. Because God said to his people, to his prophets, do not look at their faces. They may squeeze their face. They may not want to hear you. They may threaten to kill you as they threaten to kill Apostle Paul again and again and again and again. But he always stood and they preached the good news. God said to you, because you have got my anointing, you are the anointed one. You cannot be moved. You will not fear their faces. 
no matter how how hard they put their faces, how much they disfigure their faces in order to make you to be scared, but you will not fear them. Amen? Amen. So today, I just want to bring it down to you that anointing brings joy to your spirit, to your soul, to your body, bring gladness to you. Anointing makes you to rejoice, give you hope, and tell you that, look, you are not dead. Even though you sleep in this life, you will wake up again and take up your life and eternal life. Amen. That's what I'm going to do for you. And when the trumpet sound, you will be the first one to resurrect. You will be the first one to fly up. Up to heaven. Hallelujah. I tell you this is true. The Lord take me in the spirit. And I saw myself, I saw myself uh, in by, the, by the water. I was just standing and they had a trumpet. And look at these people that are dead for many years. They're all coming up from the, from the sea. All of them wearing all this rope. Coming up from the sea. And the Lord come and said, them, follow me. Amen. And they followed the Lord. What did he look like? What did he look like? Praise God. What did he look like? What did the Lord look like? I'm in the spirit. Sorry. So sorry. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. So our God is great and wonderful. And they wear all this robe and they come out from the sea. And they were going up to heaven. Hallelujah. So God gave me an assurance that this is true. And this will continue to happen when the trumpet will sound. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are you ready? The word of God is yes and amen. You've got to, you know, develop faith and believe it. Because if you don't believe it, it's not going to work for you. You've got to believe the word of God. You've got to believe the word of God so that the word of God will work for you. May God bless this word in our hearts today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand up, please? You've been watching Rock Intercessors Ministries. We believe you and your family have received God's mercy, love, healing, and miracles. Our senior pastor, Apostle Peter Anuba, would love to stay in touch with you. Please contact us for one-to-one -one prophetic, deliverance, and healing sessions. Please support us in prayers and finance to reach billions of souls whom Jesus died for. Visit our website to see how you can help rockintercessors.com You can also subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of upcoming events. See our details below and on screen. Visit our website rockintercessors.com Email us at info at rockintercessors.com Call us on 07944 204 895 Are you outside of the UK? Text or call us for free using WhatsApp. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now remain in God's goodness and mercy and may God favour you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen.